In this video, I'll outline several easy to use strategies to ensure that you get a good night's sleep. After that, I will share some very important things about your sleep and sleep habits you probably aren't aware of. And if you implement what I suggest, I guarantee a better night's sleep for you. I'm not going to have you wait until the end of this video to give you the goods, but let me get this brief intro out of the way real quick. Sleeping is one of those things that I cherish and can probably say that you do too. We all value a good night's sleep, right? Your day can be dramatically impacted by simply waking up in the morning and feeling like you got a good night's sleep versus the contrary. You felt like you did not sleep well at all. Believe it or not, you can practice sleeping well by implementing certain activities and interventions in your life and you can get better at sleep. Chris here, registered nurse, certified clinical nurse leader with my focus being research. Let's get right to the meat. What can you do right now to promote a good night's sleep? Let's talk about electronics. You've probably heard it's not a great idea to be on your iPad or cell phone right before bed. The reason is the blue light in the screen produces delays your body's natural circadian rhythm, which is your internal clock. It tricks your body into thinking it's not time for bed and it keeps you stimulated. The bright light also tells your body not to produce melatonin, which is a sleep hormone, and that adds to sleep difficulties. But I'm not here to tell you to stop looking at your phones before bed. I do it. I enjoy doing it before bed. It is a bad habit. I know that. I will say that I think sleep, I sleep better when I just read before bed and avoid my phone, but I digress. What I want to talk about are the EMFs, or electrical magnetic frequencies. Wired electrical devices emit strong electrical fields, even when they are off. Same as phones, these devices can reduce melatonin and cause sleep loss. You can buy a cheap EMF detector, I did, to see that the lamp next to your bed or your alarm clock and your cell phone produce electromagnetic frequencies. Think of the cord to your lamp that is right next to your head when you sleep as a garden hose. When you turn the garden hose on, it fills with water. When you turn it off, the hose is still full of water. An electric cord is similar in that when plugged in, it always has electricity running through it, even if the light is off. It is emitting electromagnetic waves. And research has shown that this can negatively impact your sleep and your health. Research has demonstrated that low levels of exposure to electromagnetic fields can cause symptoms of headaches, anxiety, and nausea. What did I do? I unplug everything around me, and the general rule of thumb, keep any electric devices, including my cell phone, at least six feet away from me while I sleep. If you like what you heard so far, lots more to come about getting good sleep, so go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and the bell notification so you get notified when I post another video. Next up, circadian rhythms, and what is it? In layman's terms, it is the physical, mental, and behavioral changes that follow a 24-hour cycle, natural processes within our bodies that respond primarily to light and dark. When it gets dark, our eyes recognize that and certain physiological processes begin, which then support the body in creating a sleep hormone called melatonin. The process is much more complex than this, but it is necessary for me to get into the nuts and bolts. What I want you to know is that during a 24-hour period, we go through several sleep rhythms that will provide you with the best opportunities to sleep. Typically, those times are between 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. These are the time intervals when the body really wants to be asleep. In addition to these time intervals related to our circadian rhythms, there are also sleep stages. Periods of time when we are asleep that promote rejuvenation and recovery. You may have heard of REM before, rapid eye movement, and non-REM. Our sleep goes through about four to six cycles of REM to non-REM per night. Briefly, let's discuss non-REM. There are three stages in non-REM. Stage one is the transition between wakefulness and sleep. Stage two, when you reach this stage, you are asleep. And stage three is called deep sleep, or slow wave sleep. You usually spend more time in this stage early in the night. Keep that in mind as I continue, that you usually spend more time in this stage early in the night. And then there is REM. 
And during this pattern of sleeping, your eyes twitch and your brain is active. Your brain activity is similar to what it would be during your waking hours. Dreaming usually happens during REM. Your body relaxes and muscles become limp to prevent you from acting out your dreams. My wife has hit me before in her sleep. She must not have been in REM. REM has specific benefits, different than non-REM. For example, REM sleep helps to heal you from traumatic experiences by suppressing troubling memories. It provides the energy to the brain that supports it during waking hours and is necessary for restoring the mind. Non-REM sleep, on the other hand, is essential for muscle recovery and restoring the body. I know that is a lot of information about rhythms and sleep stages, so let's simplify it. Remember how I said you usually spend more time in the deep sleep stage of non-REM early in the night? Data shows that the first deep sleep opportunity based on our sleep rhythms is there for us between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. Note that REM sleep follows deep sleep, and after REM the cycle starts over. And to reiterate, deep sleep helps the body recover, and REM helps the mind recover. So what should you do with this information, ideally? Get in bed and be ready for sleep by 10 p.m. It is that simple, and probably the most effective way to ensure you get to take advantage of the first deep sleep cycle coming your way. For me, I usually put my two boys in bed by 8.30, spend 30 to 60 minutes on my phone or reading, and lights out by 9.30. I didn't always do this, but since I've been operating this way, my sleep has dramatically improved in a major way. These two things, unplug all electrical and keep devices at least six feet away and get to sleep at 10 p.m. will foster great sleep. Extra bonus research tip if you hung around. This one is good. Since the pandemic, many of us get to work from home. It's nice to be able to earn that dough in the comfort of your own home. Many of us can get a little too comfortable, meaning we might be working on our computers where we woke up, right there in our beds. Cognitively, by working in bed, the bed can take on a different meaning to us, either consciously and or subconsciously. We can confuse our bodies when we get into bed. It doesn't know if we are going to work or sleep. Relegate your bed to sleep and making sweet love only. The bed needs to be a stimulus for sleeping, not for being awake and working. Here are an additional six simple, foundational, easy to follow steps to ensure you sleep well. All right, number one. Stick to a schedule. Our bodies, which include our circadian rhythms, like predictability. So go to bed and wake up at the same time every day. 10 p.m., remember? The magic hour. Number two, do not eat or drink three to four hours before bed, bed to avoid feeling too full and waking up in the middle of the night to pee. I typically wake up once to urinate. Quite common to do that. Three, make your room your sleep sanctuary. Somewhere that is cool, dark, and quiet. I like to use sleep masks, which create an extra dark environment. I have trouble napping during the day, except when I use one of those sleep masks. Highly recommend them. Number four, try to avoid daytime naps or limit them to less than an hour. Number five, get active. Exercise if you can during the day. Regular exercise goes without saying it promotes better sleep. And number six, you got to deal with your worries, otherwise you're in your bed thinking about them, tossing and turning. Check out my video on how to cope with anxiety. You'll find some easy to implement ways that you could use before bed and to deal with your worries effectively. Okay, those are pretty easy, right? Thanks for stopping by my channel. I hope I provided some value for you. These tips and tricks have helped me tremendously. I'm one of those people that has an active mind that races at night, thinking about a million different things. I also used to freak out when I didn't get a good night's sleep. My day would be ruined when I felt like my sleep was bad, or at least that is what my mind would tell me. Since implementing these strategies many moons ago, I cannot remember my last night of bad sleep. Sleep is just something I do now, and I do it very well. Practicing anything you want to get better at, and you will get better. Like and subscribe, please. That helps me out in a major way. Nurse Chris out.